Hi, I'm Rick Kaufman, Technical Marketing Engineer for the Technical Enablement Team here at Aruba Networks. This is Episode 4 of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about HTTP authentication. So how do we authenticate ourselves in these RESTful conversations? Well, we're going to use this thing called header authentication, and we're going to cover basic and um, bear tokens and OAuth. And that's certainly not all of them, but those are the ones I stumble over as I go down the road, and that's kind of what I'm more familiar with. Um, you can dive on into the subject deeper on other resources, but that's what I'm going to cover here in this episode. So let's get started and dive into the lecture. Thank you again for joining, and let's get started. Proving my identity, maybe, right? I'm using usernames and passwords here, so it's just as secure as that is. We all know that, that it kind of works and so we have to accept some level of risk when we do this. Now, when we want to talk to another REST entity, we need to have some way to prove um, our identity or that we are allowed to access the resource that we're trying to access. Now, this is done with something called header authentication. So HTTP authentication, we're going to be looking at the headers. We're going to use the headers to send information back and forth. And um, it's just a mechanism to say that this request has uh, is eligible to access the web resource. And luckily, there are multiple ways of doing this, so multiple schemes, some less secure, some more secure. And we are ever in search of the answer to the age-old question of who are you? That's what we hope to prove. And these guys keep asking the same question. So when I look at the World Wide Web, I can have a scheme called NoAuth because I can go to Google all the time and I don't have to authenticate and I get all kinds of information. So that's certainly a scheme. But we have this other scheme called Basic Auth where we could put our username and password in clear text in the request and send it over the wire. Not recommended, but we could do this stuff called Base64 encoding, which makes a hash and we send that hash over the wire. Now, if somebody sees a hash, they can unencode it. So it's super not that much secure, I wouldn't think. So danger, Will Robinson, here. Uh, use this if you have to. And then bear tokens or token authentication or JSON web tokens. Um, this is why I use my username and password and I get back a token. And I can put that token inside my header and use that as a form of identification. And then finally, OAuth is an open standard. It just takes more endpoints to um, identify who I am, and then I can get an OAuth token and use it um, almost the same as I would a bear token. As I go from basic to auth, it goes from less secure to more secure, and being thoughtful developers, we want to be as secure as we possibly can. So inside the header, we have the www authenticate and the proxy authenticate. And these two can take a type. And that's simply one of the one of the schemes. So that could be basic or token. The realm is just a bunch of services that use the same type or scheme for authenticating incoming requests. Now, applying the HTTP authentication, when I look at basic 64, I'm saying, here is my request, and I'm saying um, import request. I'm saying re request.get, and I'm putting this username and password variable, but I'm getting that from above. And um, that's one of those things that we don't want to do. We don't want to put usernames and passwords in code, but we're learning here, and it's okay. So, um, or I could use this command like I do on my Mac, echo dash n username password bar base64, and I get a hash. I can put the hash in the in the header and send it on over. But remember, if I take that hash, I can I can reverse it. Okay, now in token authentication, bear tokens, I'm going to put my username and password in the params and send it over in the request. Now we know we don't want to do this, but we have to JSONify it here when we're sending to this particular. Um, uh, API, we need to I, 
JSONify the params, stick that in data, and send it on over. Now, once we do that, we'll get something back, but we have to reverse JSONify it to get to the token. And so we can find the key inside a dictionary called token, and that's our token. Okay. Um, remember, don't put usernames and passwords in code. Not a good thing. But once we get that token, we can take that token and put it in our headers. So we can just put this author authorization key in there, and then we just paste our token in there. Now, every request we make to that API endpoint, we're using the token inside the header, and that's how we get access to the information we want. Now, OAuth, I said, has more endpoints in it or more identity um, variables here. So we have to go out and get a whole bunch of stuff. This is what we do when we want to talk to um, Aruba Central. And we get that information and we can put it in the request. And um, then we can get a token back and that token will get stored in a temp directory and we'll be able to use that token with all of our other requests. So this is kind of what we're going to um, lean on is OAuth tokens, but it just depends. You might try to get to an endpoint that they don't have OAuth token and not in that realm, and that realm is only token-based. So it just depends. But we want to always try to go to the best security that we can. That would be OAuth. For some reason, there's no need to JSONify this. It goes over like that. But remember, bad bad things happen. Okay, now you see me use requests here a lot, and I, I get this request get and request post. Well, I'm speaking directly to an AI endpoint. As we move into developing Python applications, we'll be using Python bindings, and we'll, we'll use the Python binding sy syntax in our code, and somewhere in that Python binding will be the request gets and the request post. So it gets abstracted for us. So I just wanted to point that out here. Before we get too far into the lab, I just wanted to point out, I showed you all this stuff with writing these HTTP authentication schemes inside headers and sending it back and forth. We're not going to do that because that is already taken care of for us in a couple of Python bindings something that we can import into our code and make it feel just like it's ours. So we can use it, so we don't have to write it. So that makes our job super easy. Now, I'm showing you a couple of things I like to use all the time, Aruba Fabric Composer and Aruba Central. So let's take a quick look. Here's a bunch of events inside Aruba Fabric Composer. So I wanna get this stuff out. I need to know about the API. I can come up here and explore the API and what's called a Swagger interface. If I go down to audits and I look at audits, I can actually pick the audit and I can try it out. Why not? And I can say execute and I can see the way the information gets returned in the audit. Remember we said we had um, curly um, braces and square brackets. Well, uh, there's a bunch of them there. Now we can figure out what we're dealing with. So, but I want to do it pro programmatically, right? So if I come back here and look at my AFC Pi, I'm using an old Python binding for the AFC. Don't worry about that. The new one's coming out very shortly, but the old one still works, so I'm using it. Um, here's my username and password in a script. Don't do this. Very bad, but that's okay. We're learning. I'm just taking the CFM client class, handing it IP address of the um, AFC, username, password. Boom, I get a token. It's just that simple. This is very easy code. And now I'm actually trying to get the AFC audits here from the system class. And I just hand it the token and I get those events back. So it really kind of looks like this when we run it, right? Let me just run it again for you. Here's the AFC. You can see I'm getting those events programmatically now. I could open up something like a ServiceNow ticket. The other system I'm using is Aruba Central. Uh, must find Aruba Central. Here we are. Sorry about that. Let me take you back to the beginning, right? So 
Here's the beginning of Aruba Central when you log in. I go to Organizations, and I come up here, Platform Integration, and REST API. So we need a couple of things here. When we're doing this sort of authentication, there's a few things we have to come up with. And I have that in a Python dictionary called Central Info. It looks like this. We need our username, and we know that, so we put that in. And we need a password. This is our Aruba Central password. Now, we're looking for four more things, client ID, client secret, and the customer ID, and the base URL. The base URL is kind of tricky. I go over here to developer Aruba Networks, and I can find a bunch of base URLs here. You can just copy and paste it like that. So you can see in my, I have a base URL. So there's three more pieces we need from Aruba Central. And sorry about that again. If we go and look under this platform integration, under REST API, we saw this, apps and tokens, and system apps and tokens. I have a application with my email name and some token information here. This is the client secret and the client ID. You have to copy these exactly into this folder, or into this dictionary, rather. So if you're looking, it ends YCT, YCT, that's right. And finally, when you get that, the last thing you need is this customer ID. I come over here, customer ID, it's right there. Grab that thing and just paste it in, and we're fine. So we can save this now. So we save that central info. I'm going to want to use it in a little script just for educational purposes. So I'm going to copy and go to this lab one and make sure it's in there. So it's there. So we're going to run this script. And this script is going to um, go to Ruba Central, get a token, and get us some groups. That's what I'm hoping it's going to do. We are going to try to run it right now. And this is usually where it fails. Um, get L-U-P-S lab dot pi. And so it's looking for a token and it didn't have one. So it generated one and stored it in the temporary folder, in the temp folder. But you can see this is my list of groups. I have a default and unprovisioned. If I go back to um, organization, and I look for um, groups, I can come here and create a new group. I will add a new group by saying plus sign and giving it a name. I can call it my new group, All right? And we'll just say um, it's for gateways. And we're going to add it in like that. And now if I go back and I run my script again to get the groups, it's going to go out and look. And it's going to come back. And now you can see at the bottom, I have my new group. That's how we get into Aruba Central. Now, I don't like doing this in my code. I don't like having something like this where people can see it. So I try to um, sneak it in in other ways. So here's a much more streamlined version of this program. This is, I turned it into a definition. So it's just a very few handful of lines. This is super easy code here. This is this is simply getting the token from a, from a, a function I created called get client. So now it does all the client stuff for me. So it's getting my client token and bringing it back. Simple single line of code. I make a copy of the groups class. And here's where I do my API. I go to the get groups, I give it the token, then I get a response back. I get a bunch of groups. And basically I'm returning it to this little function down here and you can see it printed out. We're gonna go ahead and run that. It's just called get groups without the lab. And now you can see it run the same way. Survey says, there they are. So you can see my new group 
is in there as well. So I could go back to Aruba Central, create another group and show it to you, but that's basically what it does. You need to get this information that we pointed out before, the central info information, and we need to make sure that it's not in our script, but we can have it um, outside our script as well. I'll show you how I did that. Under utility, I have a, a little script there called um, client, and all it does, it, it gets, it does the get client, or it's called get client. It actually gets the client using Aruba central information, and here it is importing the central info. Okay, I just wanted to thank you for attending this session of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series. In the next episode, episode five, we're going to look at Python data structures once again. I know I'm killing you guys with the square brackets and the curly braces, but this time we're going to look at what we have to do with those Python data structures in order to make them work in some of the API calls. We have to wrap them up in JSON. We're going to cover that. We're going to see what happens when we don't, and we're going to kind of prod around a dictionary that ha has several levels so we can practice on finding the right things. So join me in that episode, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you for watching.